Hello guys, it's the Gingerator, and today we're playing XCOM 2. After getting our butts delivered to us on silver plates last round, we look to adapt our strategy. After failing our last mission, the spokesman sends us an encryption of his best anime porn. <coughs> Hold on, wait. No, what he really sent us was some information on the black site. Hello, Commander. It would seem your recent activities have gotten Advent's attention. Our unwelcome guests are on the move. Advent has been diverting considerable resources and personnel to covert facilities across the globe. The exact details of these operations are highly classified. However, they do have one thing in common. A single word that appears in all their files. Avatar. I believe the black site we had previously uncovered to be but a part of this Avatar project. Based on what we have uncovered so far, its true scope is far greater. This project is being directed from the very top of Advent, from a source I am still unable to determine. All attempts to uncover its identity have met with failure. It is time to take a more direct approach. Though we may not know the exact nature of this Avatar project, we can still disrupt it. We must root out these hidden facilities with the help of local resistance cells, disrupt our enemy's operations, and in the process, uncover the truth. Locate the source of this Avatar project, and then destroy it. Were the enemy to succeed in their efforts, I am certain it would mean the end for us all. I am confident you will take whatever measures necessary to eliminate this threat, Commander. We're tracking the aliens' progress on this Avatar project here. If they finish what they've started, it sounds like it'll be the end for all of us. So what this means for us is we have to successfully complete missions now. We are on a game timer and we cannot fuck up. And there's also a GC supply mission that just showed up, so we'll jump right into that. One of our resistance contacts sent word of an advent troop transport they managed to disable in this area. And the aliens have apparently struggled to get it moving again. <laughs> this is our chance to strike. Anything we can recover from that transport will be a boost to our efforts. Move in and secure the surrounding area. Eliminate all hostile contacts with extreme prejudice. I love the authority and just the condescending nature that uh, the Central has. He's kind of like a... I haven't had any military experience, but kind of like a drill sergeant. Just like majorly talking shit to everyone. Uh, but being in power, just the control of their lives, I love it. Uh, okay, so Dragon Trek is a go. We have Supply Line Raid. And I cannot stress how important this will be to us. This is in the wilderness of Eastern U.S. I forgot where it was actually at. I think it's like um, Pennsylvania... We'll maybe go for a... Uh, not Maryland. I like that, that area, you know. Man, dropping down on these treetops. The Advent Troop Transport is nearby. Engage and eliminate Fuck, all yes. hostile forces. Okay, well, we lucked out for sure because we have the best possible spot here. We are at night, so they have reduced vision. We also have two snipers and a long carbine for all of the ranged combat we could ever want. Also, the train's going to be along this area here. Let's see what we can see through the fog of war. Um, there's something right here. So this is just more road over here in this direction. Yeah, a bunch of towers and stuff. I'm also looking at the rain. There seems to be a train right here. Well, it's less of a train as much as it's just like a, a building. Now, there is other areas we can shoot from over here but we want to keep our guys together we don't want to split our guys up i don't feel confident enough as a player to split them up in theory it's best to split up your troops because then you have multiple angles that you can flank your enemy from but i don't feel comfortable in that not yet all right we're just moving our guys up because there's no time limit we're good we can just chill and enjoy ourselves and put our snipers on pistol overwatch and we're good oh shit Without the introduction of human DNA, these creatures once operating under the guise of thin men now show their true form. 
a purely reptilian species. No reason for them to hide. The aliens don't need an infiltration unit anymore. This complicates things. So as you just heard them, we have our Thin Men here in the place of a Viper. Other way around, I guess. Um, maybe? No. So ahead, I do skip out on a few repositioning turns, but you don't miss out on anything, and we have not broken concealment yet. We have not started to engage. At this point, hey. Anytime they wish. Really. Ready for attack. Throwing you back under cover. Ian Carter. Let's see what you can see. Stay clear of those turrets. Shit. We're still not entirely sure if they're fully automated or remotely triggered. Okay, so this turret has extra armor thanks to alloy padding. Which, if you remember, that was the enemy um, buff they received from the gorilla mission we failed. So they're very much as a snowball effect here. The longer we continue to fail missions like that, the stronger they will become. Where can we move Franzic? Franzic? I think it's Franzic. Yeah, no say. Um, we don't know what's over here by the building. I'm assuming they're all just chilling by this building over here. We can continue to move our guys along this way to see if we can spot those two enemies we Let's just go. encountered. We also have a strat with this. Because he's on a higher elevation, we can chuck a grenade on this turret here and it'll instantly destroy it. Because they can't deal with gravity at all. They weigh like 14 tons. And so just Move one it. grenade will take it out instantly. Okay, we spotted our slithery friend here, along with his wingmen. Along with some other enemies. Now, I don't like the idea of being in vision of this turret. I'm perfectly fine taking out these five troopers here, I think. So now we are in vision of all the enemies on the map, and we want to be able to move up to find the best possible engagement location. And we want to skip ahead just a little bit to skip behind some second guessing. Okay, this is interesting, because now we see... The two guys we saw earlier, and we will be able to engage them. I'm going to throw aid protocol and the only one here that's actually in vision of them. We have a log here, we have a log here. Large rock where we're chilling right now. Interesting. I think we can pull this grenade off. Let's go for the safer choice. Let's go for tall cover. Fuck, we can't see them. Okay, that was the wrong choice. Cool. I should've just gone here. We still can't see them. What? Okay, we can. Okay. I was uh, slightly spooked. Um, alright, I'm getting cold feet now, because we won't be able to kill both of them this turn. Now, why is that important? Well, we have pot shot here on this tall cover, but this cover is along this side. It's not protecting us from the north. So let's say this snake here decides to shoot at pot shot. He has an open shot. He can take him out so easily. And that's scary. I don't like the idea of that. We might get spotted. We also don't have our aid protocol that we wanted. But uh, if we look on the bright side, we can throw a grenade on them because they're right on top of us. That's that's cool. That's a good thing. All right, Ian Carter, we're moving you up. We're going to use that long blaster rifle to our advantage. We can now hit him with a 72% chance. Now, we have a pretty good chance to hit him with Foxy, and we should have an amazing sh chance to hit him with pot shot. That's what this risk is for. That's just to get a, a good chance to hit them. Alright, grenade time. We're going to take out this tall tree here. Now, does that actually matter? It does not matter. They will not be able to use that tall tree against us. 
but this does give us the chance to blow up and set on fire like these vines over here. It won't destroy the vines, but it will cause a little bit more trouble for those other enemies to get up here. They might be set on fire if they choose to do so. It's a chance, but it's, yeah, it's better than nothing. So both of those enemies were hit in that engagement. They are now under Overwatch fire. First shot coming out. Hit the Viper right in the back. And took him out instantly. Five damage. Hell yeah. So we took out the snake. First shot. Second shot of Overwatch. Ian Carter. Misses. Third Overwatch. Pot shot. Direct hit. Whew. Frederick was scared there. He was looking death in the eye. Holy crap. So that was a successful mission. We're just going to chill. Again, we don't have any kind of time restrictions right now, so we're just taking as much time as we can. I'm setting everyone to go ahead and reload here. This will be our most vulnerable turn. But the other enemies weren't alerted to us yet. Uh, maybe they saw that tree on fire, but you know, I guess these aliens are a big fan of bonfires and just like, blowing shit up, right? I mean, it sounds pretty likely. So we now have Frenic on Overwatch. We now have Hotshot and Denial. I forgot our sniper's name. No, Denial is Hotshot. Well, we have Foxy here on Overwatch. That's who it is. We're gonna throw Ian Carter on Overwatch. Scratch that. We're gonna throw him on Aid Protocol, and then we'll put on Overwatch. We're gonna move up to this position where we saw the enemies before, right here. Okay, we have enemies over here. I think that's pointing towards the turret, which we know it's there. It's not new news to us. Like we drilled, go. All positions here. So my plan here is just to move Ian Carter up and use him as bait. Basically, that's what my plan is. Actually, no, we know there's a turret right there. We don't want to agitate this too much. Do we? Maybe we do. I don't know. I don't know anymore. Okay, we spotted the turret. I don't know if Overwatch actually triggers on when he's firing like this. He's going to fire at us, 100%. We have a 76% chance to hit him. But I think I want to go for the defensive route and just hunt it down. Okay, Overwatch does not seem to be firing, so we can safely say it does not trigger on enemies firing on us. Which I guess makes sense. Okay, let's see how these snipers do for now. We can go for Deadeye here and instantly take out this turret at a 48% chance to hit. Let's go for it. Looks like we hit it. Yes, we took it out one shot. So that was pretty good. We had a 50% chance to hit, well, 48%, basically 50%. We now have Pot Shot on Overwatch and Ian Carter. Let's just chill. Okay, nothing yet. See here, I'm going to put Denial on Overwatch. I'm going to put Foxy on Overwatch. I want to move up Frantic a little bit. Let's see what's in this little. Not hallway area, it's more of like a walkway. Okay, we have a little bit more vision inside the building, but we don't actually have vision of where the enemies are. So we moved him up a little bit, we're gonna have him chill. Now we're going to move up Ian Carter a lot, actually. The farthest he can go is this destroyed stump from when the turret was attacking it. It was a destroyed tree, and now it's a stump. Okay, we spotted the enemy. First watch shot from Foxy. Five damage to the sectoid. That was pretty good. Now, we are pretty vulnerable on all angles right now. So I'm just going to haul ass and get out of here. There's a tall tree we can get behind right here. And if anyone comes this way, we should have Frenic. Frenic should have our back, is what I'm trying to say. All these guys should just be moving forward, and they won't be able to attack us or anything. 
Are you Frank? Okay, he didn't actually come up. So, Foxy is over here on one of our flanks. Now, we can actually fire on these guys. Unfortunately, we don't get a second height advantage buff um, because we're two stories up. I wish it worked that way. It'd be pretty awesome, but it doesn't. We can choose to take out the sectoid right here now, and I think we're going to go for that. Okay, the sectoid is down, and he drops some gear. We also have Foxy over here. We can throw the flashbang on this Lancer. That might help. And what is it going to help from, you ask? Well, he's going to try to run up and um, stab Foxy. 82% chance? That's really high. It's not going to quite destroy him. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it, if we did max damage, he'll have one health bar left. I'm a thinking. Okay, so why does he have 82% chance to hit? So he has 82% aim plus the 20% buff. So if I were to move Ian Carter over here, I would have a 65% chance to hit him. And I need both hit to connect to take this Lancer out this turn. I'm not getting that. That's just a fact. I'm not going to get that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move Foxy back. Now, can this Lancer actually move upstairs? He cannot move up to the high cover. Or I guess the, the high height advantage area thing? He can't get up here. Why is this Overwatch triggering? That should be happening. Okay, thankfully he missed. I He did see me. I just didn't think of it. So I'm retreating my guys back over here. Because... We have two enemy Lancers. That's our opposition right now. I don't think they have any kind of AoE, but we just need to move them back so we don't get stunned. I'm moving Frannik back here, and I'll set you on Overwatch, Frannik. Alright, let's see what they do. Oh shit, we just got hit. We don't know where we got hit from, though. Alright, Frannik, do your thing. Five damage to him, but we didn't quite kill him. He's bleeding sparks. He's bleeding sparks. Oh crap! You, ew, he nearly died. Holy crap! Start pointing at everyone. Point at everyone. Ah! Uh, so that was freaking scary, guys. He nearly just got one shot at that. Holy shit! That was scary. Now I can get over there in two turns if I move real fast. I can also just take out this Stun Lancer first shot. Let's watch it. Okay, didn't quite do that. I was hoping to get the critical, didn't get the critical. Uh, what this allows me to do though is I can move Foxy up really far up here. And I should be able to just pot off one shot with the fire pistol. No targets available, wow. That's a little upsetting. Okay, well, we got this guy, but I can get a near 100% chance to slash him. I can also just shoot him in the face for 100% chance to hit him. What? Okay, I just took down the load. I got really concerned that it was like a 99.99% .99 chance, and that 0.01% chance prevailed. Oh my god, I would be so pissed. Aid protocol, we're going to throw that on Foxy right here because we know we can't kill this Lancer. I really wished we could actually hit him here. I shouldn't have been so conservative last turn. And, um... What should I do here? I probably should be healing up Frantic, but I can also move Foxy like to this tall cover. Expecting the Lancer's going to try to come up and hit him. And I'll throw Overwatch on Ian Carter to try to kill him this next turn. I'm, Let's have some fun. That might work. I, I don't know if it will or not. We'll see. Okay, he's moving up like I predicted. Overwatch is in play. Hell yeah! Okay, we killed him. 
So the way that plan could have gone wrong, if there were more enemies to the north that have appeared, and then just like instantly shot up Frantic. But that didn't happen. We'll go ahead and reset and reload a little bit. Now, I want denial on Overwatch, because we're going to go for those supplies. We have one more turn to capitalize on that. We'll go ahead and heal up Frantic as well. Spray some deodorant on him, get him healed up. Watch. Uh, let's go for a reload because the DC 15A has limited ammo capacity. That's one of the drawbacks for the longer range. Now, where's the best cover in here? It'd probably be right here. I'm expecting there to our northwest. I can't guarantee that though. Ooh, two cores. That's really good. Here's we're just chilling. Okay, well that was a weird transition. Hmm. We can move one of our snipers right here, I think. I think that'd be a pretty good choice. Alright, let's put Denial on Overwatch. He only has one round left. We need to keep that in mind. So does Foxy. We'll throw Foxy up here to this tall cover. Again, this is the tree that got cut down. So we have some more enemy targets somewhere. They're not the ones we encountered earlier, though. Those are the ones we just fought. Those are the ones we first saw in, like, the second turn of this mission. Moving up Ian Carter to this tree. Yeah, going kind of slow with this, but... Uh, we haven't lost anyone yet, but... <laughs> that's some good news. We got this, like, stump rock thing over here. Let's see what we can see. All right, a whole lot of nothing. We'll have to do We'll have our snipers go and reload here because we'll get into a fight pretty quickly. Everyone in Overwatch just gonna chill. Ooh. Okay, so my plan did work. They did not move up. I think they might be in this building over here by this like I'm gonna call it a vertebrate. It's like their like VTOL ship. Alright, our two snipers are going to go on long watch. As per usual, that's kind of what happens when you bring two snipers to the mission like this. You were just always on Overwatch. I love Overwatch so much. I really do. And it may not be the most entertaining thing to watch, but it's, it works. It's successful. Okay. So, we have three out of four guys on Overwatch right now. I think I want to move up Ian Carter as bait. We have some rocks over here on the side. There are some of our supplies. Those are the sweet meats that we want to try to protect. Okay. We're taking some shots now. Five damage on something. We don't know what it is. I said taking shots. I'm actually giving shots. Not quite taking shots. Okay. One went inside the building there. And we have two, I believe, no, we have one Lancer, one Officer, and then one just regular Trooper. So, knowing this, I think I want to move down my ranger. I think this would be a good opportunity to try to flank. Hmm. Alright, question. Will the stink and flank work? Well, if we have more enemies over here, no. If these are the last enemies of the mission, yes. There doesn't appear to be any kind of doors or anything nearby in this area, so I think I can safely move my ranger to this area. Fernic can then move to the window next turn and shoot through the window at like let's say this advanced trooper here it's not an advanced trooper it's a regular trooper getting a little ahead of myself let's move frantic up here this is a bit risky because he has a lower hp than i would like yeah, by that he just doesn't have full hp so we can go for the dead eye shot here but i think it'd be better just to go for the easy shots we can go for Negative thirty, negative blue, blue, negative thirty-two percent chance because of squad side. This is because he's so far away; it's a lot harder to hit this guy. I think we should just go ahead and go for it, though. Did I hit the supplies? I don't think I hit the supplies. The supplies are here. We got some more over here as well. 
Now, we can use aid protocol. We can also just instantly take out this head officer. There's really an easy answer here. We have to go for the officer. The officer is going to cause so many problems for us. We have to take him out. He's like a, a, a roach or a pest. Now, this choice is a bit harder. I can go for the Lancer, and we'll instantly kill him next turn. I can also throw a, a flashbang out, but I won't quite hit him. Oh, I will. Hmm. I can also just instantly take out this trooper. I think we'll go for him. Defending the herd, it'll help us out taking out this last guy. And no matter what, he's going to be in range to stun someone. So we'll just take a hit and go from there. Hopefully he doesn't just critical and one-shot him. Alright, Ian Carter has been hit, two damage taken. So it's a, a minor injury, but not life-threatening. Alright, Frenic is in range for a nice little slash. But I think we want to go for... We can hit him with a pistol. We can do that. He's so fucked. There's no way he's getting out of this. He missed. Okay. And apparently there's a chance he's getting out of this. If we cannot miss, that would be awesome. Now I can't actually hit him with a pistol with pot shot here. Let's go for the sniper round. Okay. Got him in the shoulder. Did 5 damage and 1 armor mitigation. Let's go for the slash. I like the slash. We're going to run up here against this tree. And pull out our sword and do some things to him. There we go. Man, that looked cool. I wish they had a cursor here. Status confirmed. All hostiles are down and the area is secure. Status confirmed. Mission accomplished. Hell yeah. All nine enemies killed. Mission complete. We did have three troopers wounded. That's a lot higher than I thought it was. In 21 turns, 21 turns taken. Um, I'm just being very cautious with this. But we succeeded. We had an excellent rating as well, which is pretty cool. Now, this is super big. Because we now have an average damage per attack record. <laughs> That's not important. Super big because we now have alien alloys we can now use to get plated armor. Plated armor will help us snowball a little bit and be able to keep our troopers alive. Which will in turn give them higher ranks. Which will in turn give them better damage and utility items. Uh, items meaning abilities. It's just awesome over around. This is really really good for us so guys let me know what you think let me know what you think about the editing i did a lot of effort into this video as far as editing trying to make the best quality video possible so do let me know if you like it or if you don't like it um and i guess i'll see you guys next time stay classy out there